I've been trying to clean and arrange stuff. I have all the time on my hands I need because of this virus stuff. And I thought I would uh, show some vacuum tubes that I've come across. This is a three terminal vacuum tube. It has a filament. This base is, is a large base. It's a, called a mogul base. Standard screw-in lamps in the United States have Edison bases. Back in the 20s, big steam locomotives were called moguls. I guess when Hollywood needed some indoor lighting, they manufactured lamps with mogul bases because often you find these on a 1500 watt incandescent bulb or a bigger specification sheet just assumes you know that this is the filament down here and this is the anode connection which is just a piece of wire probably invar or maybe Kovar wire. Now there's mercury vapor in this tube. That is, if they get cold you can actually get see a drop of liquid mercury. You can see against the white background the filament with two conducting and supporting legs going down to the base. Then you can see the anode coming through the glass has a flat round plate on it. These were used as low voltage rectifiers in battery chargers. The filament is rated 2.2 volts at 18 amps. And let's just say the maximum rated voltage is 200. These never did very well at higher voltages but 6 amps output per tube tremendous amount of current for a rectifier it requires 13 volts to initiate conduction it has an 8 volt drop from here to here in service these give off a little bit of a blue glow this tube actually has a date code of uh, 6314. The data sheet is RCA, but these were manufactured by lots of manufacturers. I'm pretty sure RCA and other manufacturers stopped making this before 1963. This one was made by Gordos Corporation. This little tube is a 955 acorn tube. It did not fit in a conventional socket. It has these five radial pins. The tube itself is an indirectly heated cathode uh, triode. The pins are just as I'm holding it. My fingers against the plate or pin two. This little freestanding pin is the grid. And this pin in the middle here is the cathode. Then the filament or heater pins are on either side of the cathode. This arrangement was physically chosen. Interconnection capacitance between the connectors. You can see the in inner electrode capacitance that's inside the glass. It there is held very, very small. That's done in order to encourage high frequency operation. Go to all this trouble to minimize 
inner electrode capacitance. And we can't use a conventional socket because we would just, the circuit capacitance, we'd lose any advantage we had by designing the tube this way. This data sheet's dated 44. This probably came out before 44. I can't make out the date code on it. It's interesting to note, I'll get a little closer here, in the footnotes, double asterisk, this is frequency, it's actually wavelengths, I mean before World War II, at least in the 20s, you measured your transmitter frequency in meters. That's where long wave, short wave comes from. Short waves are higher frequency than long waves. Okay, it's talking about at five meters only, then moderate reduction until wavelengths get as low as one meter. With well, a double asterisk is output power. If this tube was used to generate power, which it obviously was, it would make all of a half a watt at 5 meters, which is about 50 megahertz. Now the heater, which are these two pins, We're grounded using two little capacitors to ground and the cathode was grounded so that effectively isolated these three pins from these two pins.